Hi everyone, um, thanks for tuning in to my second video on this channel. Um, hopefully you've already watched my animated short, The Light in the Dark, because in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of creating it. Uh, now, if you haven't seen it yet, you can find The Light in the Dark via this YouTube channel. Uh, it's the only other video there at the moment, so it should be pretty easy to find. Um, now, I'm not gonna spend lots of time on each element. I'm gonna be going into much more detail uh, on each one in later videos. I just wanted to start out with a bit of an overview of my process uh, without getting too bogged down in the details. So where did I start? Well, the place to start with anything like this is always the concept and the story. Uh, the Light in the Dark was originally an idea I had for a children's picture book. Uh, so it began its life as a manuscript and then that manuscript was turned into a dummy, which is a partially illustrated version of the book. Now, for writers, the dummy is generally only created after they've sold the book to a publisher and an illustrator gets involved. But for author illustrators like myself, creating a dummy is something that can be helpful to present a work to a publisher. Um, and now the dummy starts as a series of rough layouts that follow a standard page count and length. It's then revised and some of the artwork is completed to give the publisher an idea of what the finished product might look like. So I created a dummy of the light in the dark as a picture book but it wasn't really something that was interesting enough at the time for publishers to publish. So because I still really liked the story, I decided to learn how to animate and edit video so that I could turn it into something else. Um, and I decided to try and create the animated short fairly quickly and as inexpensively as I could. So to do that, I chose Blender to animate it and DaVinci Resolve to edit the video. These are both free programs and they're both fantastic. I, I really do recommend them. Now, I'd never used either of these programs before, so I was perhaps getting a little bit ahead of myself, but ultimately I worked it out, and the first step to animate it was to work out how I was gonna translate the story into animated segments and just how much animation there was going to be in the video. Um, I ended up sort of choosing a, an intermediate level of animation, and by that I mean I used camera moves and I animated small movements, but I, I didn't try to make everything move or to have really complex movements or animation. Uh, it, it really helped that the main character was a lighthouse though who was stuck in one position. Um, so I decided that each double page spread from the book would work quite well as a little scene to animate. Um, but I started by animating the title card first as a proof of concept, just to make sure I could actually do it. Uh, and it turned out pretty well. Uh, I also used that title card to test out how to use DaVinci Resolve uh, to edit video and to add sound and visual transitions. So once I was happy that the process seemed to work and was achievable, I went back and started to animate each of the spreads from the story. Uh, I wanted to keep it linked back to the picture book concept, so I kept the words as visual elements in, in there. Uh, I could have just used audio over the animation, but I think having the words there is really nice and adds something different and sort of helps to create a, uh, I guess, a video book hybrid. To work out how long each segment needed to be, I used text-to-speech generators online to create the audio for the initial rough cut. Ultimately, the quality of the generated voices wasn't quite what I wanted, so in the end, I recorded myself reading the story. But generating the voice early on helped me to very quickly have something that I could use to understand roughly how long each segment needed to be. Uh, I also used royalty-free sound effects and music to add an extra layer of sound to the story. Once I had a rough cut of the whole thing, I could use that to go back and edit the pacing of each scene. In some cases that meant re-exporting the animated segment from Blender after I'd made changes, but luckily because I was using software, uh, it didn't add too much time to the process. Once a segment had been animated, I could go back and stretch it out or compress things to improve the pacing. And ultimately, look, I probably spent more time than I needed to to create the short, but because I was learning the process and the software as I went, that's not really that surprising. Um, it was actually really flexible and forgiving in a lot of ways because I was using digital methods. Another thing that really surprised me was just how good the free software was that I used. Uh, Blender and DaVinci Resolve are really great for animation and editing and I'm really grateful to the people um, that put so much effort into creating them. Uh, I'm really looking forward to diving into the process in more detail in the coming weeks about each of those individual programs. So that's a general overview of how I created The Light in the Dark. I'll be going back and creating process videos for each of the elements in much more detail. And look, there's so much to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the first pass and I hope that you come back for more. 
Uh, if you'd like to like this video or subscribe to my channel, that would be an amazing help. But even just watching this video is great, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, see you next time.